Uh, my name is Johnny Hawkins. Excuse me. I am the lead singer of the band Nothing More. We're from uh, San Antonio, Texas originally, but I'm up here in Nashville, Tennessee now. And we are fighting to get back to Australia as soon as we can. We were back there years ago at uh, Soundwave. Oh, yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, it was a blast. All right, so Nothing More unleash your new album, Carnal, on June the 28th, bro. So how are you feeling about it? Man, uh, very, very optimistic and confident about this one. We worked really hard on it the last uh, year and a half. And we, I don't know, I just felt like we hit a, a new level of unity as a band and kind of a synergy when we were making this album. So it's definitely something special. It is for sure, man. And so tell us a bit more about it from a musical point of view and what you were going for with it. Um, we did kind of a a deeper, more introspective, dense album before called Spirits. Mm -hmm. And that was the first of what is probably going to be a kind of a trilogy set of albums. Okay. Uh, the second one being Carnal that's coming out. And uh, I worked for about two years on the side on kind of a side project called uh, a spirits test. It's kind of like a meta personality test. And uh, if you go to spiritstest.com, you can take it and find out which one of eight spirit types you are. And so that whole concept was kind of this launching point for the last album. And it led to this album because we wanted to, instead of focusing on kind of the spiritual psychological mental space who wanted to focus more on the animalistic survival you know primal side of our nature and uh in doing that we wrote an album that's a little more gripping a little more immediate a little more aggressive uh and we wanted to write really big choruses so that was the goal of this album and i think uh we feel like we we succeeded so so when you <clears> say <throat> it's going to be a trilogy do you, do you mean that lyrically or do you mean it sonically or Spiritually, I guess. I just, um, yeah, so I think the third album in the set will probably be something a little more human centric, you know, somewhere in the middle of our carnal nature and our, our spirit nature. And uh, so that's what I mean by a trilogy conceptually um, between the three albums that they're just going to touch on the different aspects of our nature that's kind of explored in that spiritstest.com um uh, thing that i had developed uh two years ago so yeah cool oh, we probably haven't got enough anywhere near enough time for you to go into this in depth with me bro but the pennies just dropped now who you are like because i did that test when it came out and i'm normally against those things because <laughs> i reckon they're full of shit but <laughs> you're spot on man like what i what i came out with i remember sitting there thinking like have i met this guy before like it was spot <laughs> like how how did you come up with was it how much research did you have to put oh, into put that whole thing together well, that's awesome to hear they did it. Um, yeah, um, a lot of them are pretty silly online, but this one was, uh, I call it a meta personality test just because uh, it's almost like with scientific studies, they have a meta study where, uh, for those that don't know, it's like, you know, the combination of all the studies they've done, they do a study on all of them and together contextually. And that's kind of what I did with this. I was always really fascinated with, the Myers Briggs, uh, Briggs personality assessment, and there's another one called the Big Five that I think Jordan Peterson is, who's you know real uh, notorious now on YouTube and all that. I think he was a part of the think tank on that one. There's another one called the Anagram that's a little more, you know, woo woo y, uh, and then all the way woo woo y is like the Zodiac, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I tried to take stuff that was real dry and scientific and stuff all the way on the other side of the spectrum that was real artsy and spiritual and woo woo y and try to meet somewhere in the middle of all of them. Because um, I often find that th there's a different lens, you know, one lens is blurry and spiritual and one lens is clear and scientific. And so that was my goal with the spirits test was to put all those together and make one test. Right. And that, that was one way you answered a series of questions, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But what, what I really yeah. liked about that from memory, bro, was like, it was up to the individual how accurate it was. Like if you answered the questions, honestly, 
you can find out the truth, you know, but because there was a couple of questions in there that are a little bit like, you know, like, no, I won't say macho ish, but you know, it's like, yeah, I'll tick that one because I'm a tough guy. But if you had to go on along that way, <laughs> it wouldn't have come out right. But if you had to answer it honestly and from your heart, right, you got to the other, yeah, end, that came out. That's always, the, yeah, that's always the trick is getting people to answer honestly and, uh, in a calm level state of mind where they're fully, fully fed, uh, calm. Uh, you know, those things play. That's why I encourage people to take it more than once because you might answer a little differently. I, I like the way it came out the first time. I'm not, I'm not game to try it again. I might end up something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you get attached to one of them, you're like, well, I don't want to do yeah, it for now. That, that's me. <laughs> so, uh, or some people who get the, the spirit type tattooed on them. They, it, would be, it would be so disappointing if they took it again. It was different. <laughs> that's right. Another one here. I got What's more. <laughs> so back to the music, man. Like um, Spirits as, as an album, it was a massive success for you, bro. Like, what was is as a musician, is there a temptation just to rehash that winning formula over again on the next one because you know people like it? Or is it more a case if you wanna you wanna grow a little bit more and, and push it a bit extra? Um, up until this point, I've always felt like we have more to gain than we do to lose. Um, in regards to taking risks or just trying something a little differently. I don't feel like we've arrived at our full potential by any means. So the goal is always to try and keep growing and reinventing while still tapping into the things that worked in the past. Like, for example, I think we, we wanted to tap into some of our roots from like our self-titled album on this one. Uh, a good example of that is house on sand and the intro to it is called carnal. Mm -hmm. And those really tap into a lot of similar vibes from uh, this is the time on the self-titled album and, and it's intro ocean floor. So we did kind of do that, but it's a total reinvention of that part of ourselves. And then in other areas, we totally tried something new, like the song uh, down the river is very different than I think any of the other songs we've ever done on other albums. It's a little more, uh, I don't know. It's a little more broad, maybe even touches on pop. Even it's not pop, but it's, it's very mainstream. Whereas other songs like house on sand are much heavier and more niche. Yeah. I was going to mention carnal later, but since you brought it up, I'll, I'll bring it in now. But there was, I loved that track. Like it was, as I was saying to you before, I haven't heard much of your music. So I put the album on and that came out. It was all nice and sweet and ambient. And I'm thinking, what the fuck have I gotten into here? And then it started slowly building up and slowly building up. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, the breakdown's coming. And then bang, you stop it. And it's like, are these guys fucking with me or what? It was it was a really, really cool intro to the album. Oh, is it is it because the link that you have, it stops before it plays the next yeah, song? Yeah, isn't it supposed to? No. Oh, oh right, man. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that would be giving me blue balls right there. That sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you, if you watch the music video on YouTube, it's seamless. Well, um, I it'll it'll go straight from one into the other. That's the, that's the annoying thing about streaming nowadays is that we, we have those, we do a lot of conceptual crossovers from track to track and sometimes it ruins that process. I actually liked it. Like as I, say, I was starting off and I was thinking it was a bit, how you're going, but as it was going on and then it built up, I thought these clever bastards, they built you to a point and then they've just gone, Right, well, so it actually, <laughs> it actually worked. <laughs> it's like turning the lights on at the bar at 2 a.m. <laughs> so to date, you've released the singles, If It Doesn't Hurt, uh, House on Sand and Angel Song. So um, I know the answer to this, but are they a good representation of what to expect from the rest album? Yeah, I think they, uh, they cover a pretty decent range of what the album's going to touch on. You know, House on Sand touches a little bit of the heavier tracks that we have on there. Uh, if it doesn't hurt touches more of the anthemic rock, you know, upbeat songs and then angel songs, a little bit more of that broader uh, mainstream, big chorus kind of palatable stuff. So I think we touch on those. Uh, yeah. So I guess to answer your question, yeah, those three do <laughs> touch on a lot of the notes yeah. throughout the album, but then there's some surprise tracks in there that are very different. Yeah, uh, two of those songs, um, House from Sand and Angel Song, featured some guest artists. So tell us a bit about why you brought them in on, in on the songs. Yeah, um, 
So we played a show in Switzerland with Disturbed and I Prevail. And we just uh, hit it off with, I mean, we we toured with Disturbed before, so we knew those guys, but we didn't always have a lot of times to hang out. And this show was just the perfect situation. It was a, a, a green room with a ton of uh, space backstage and everybody d didn't have to rush to the next show, which is often the case. So we got to hang out with them and I prevail and we just had a great time. And then when uh, we finished that Europe tour and came back to the States, they were fresh on our mind. We're like, you know, we should reach out to David uh, from Disturbed and reach out to uh, Eric from I prevail. And it just uh, worked out. But originally, David was going to be on Stuck, which is the next single we're about to release. But then we moved him to Angel Song because um, we thought it might be a bigger song at radio. And he's kind of a, at least in the United States, he's kind of a darling of the rock radio. He's a legend there. And we're like, yeah, this one might be a little bigger, broader. And it's more of a rock song than a metal song. So we didn't uh, want to just do the full Disturbed thing because I feel like they already cover that territory with him. So we wanted to try something a little different with him. Yeah, sure. I've never actually thought to ask this to anyone before, bro. But like, as, as a vocalist, like, how, how is it having other people come in and, and do songs with you? Like, is it sort of like, like they're taking your baby off you sometimes, I guess. And like, doesn't matter how big they are, but <laughs> they, they're coming into your territory a little bit. So is there ever any of that like in the back of your mind or is it just a. Yeah. You, I mean, from? There, it, it, you know, it was different with each song. Cause I'll give you an example. Like the song stuck. Um, I had never written a verse two to that song. So when Sinister, who's one of the features on the album, he, he came in and I was like, hey, try something on this verse. It was actually a relief because I was so busy with other parts of the album that I almost didn't even have time to work on it. And I, I kind of wanted to see what someone else would do anyway and give a spark of creativity. But then other songs like, uh, you know, Angel Song or House on Sand with Eric and David, I had already recorded vocals for the, those entire songs. So they were complete. And at first, I'll be completely honest, I was a little bit reluctant to let go of certain lines. I was like, man, I really liked this <laughs> one lyric and I, and I felt really connected and attached to it. And I liked how my vocal performance was, you know, after you work so hard on something. Um, but I, you know, I had to, you know, also listen to the guys in the band and kind of put take a step back because I could because I knew that I was being biased. And yeah. then when I finally did over time, I was like, okay, this is this is the right move. I'm really glad to have them on the songs. But at first it is like someone's taking your baby away yeah. and you're like, ah <laughs> <laughs> then you realize the baby's a pain in the ass and you're like, take it, take it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm just grabbing my water bottle one one no, right, right. I, here we go. I ran out of water. <laughs> oh good man. Go. Oh good. Now the press release says that Carnal features your most focused, adventurous, and intense music to date. Would, would you agree with that statement? Uh, yeah, I think so. How so? Um, I think these songs are just really um, potent. You know, we have a lot, like the Spirits album is a little bit more of a journey. There's songs that we go real deep, like Face It and Spirits and turn it up like um, those songs just have so many parts and so many twists and turns. And uh, this album is a little bit more to the point, you know, it's just hit play and go, you know, there's not a lot of, um, you, you know, bands like tool where you really got to let the music grow and you have to absorb it and, um this album we wanted it to be less like that and I, and i think we got that it's just more potent yeah and did you say before that you had sinister on the album too so is there a few more collaborations coming up yeah um well actually we have uh so sinister is the one coming up on the next single called stuck but then we have one more that's going to be a surprise uh feature on the song uh free fall so yeah, that's going to be probably our right. last, like, yeah, it's going to be the big single on the album. 
I'm, I'm really gonna, excited about that one. I'm going back to my notes that I've got and I'm going to see who it is, but I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, good, good. I'm, well, I'm glad you know. i got to keep it a secret for now. Yeah, I will, man. I'm good at keeping secrets. <laughs> it's just not my own. Just not my own. Everyone else's I'm fine with, but not my own. <laughs> well, I feel you on that. <laughs> so how would you say overall, bro, like how would you say that your sound has, has grown and changed over the course of your albums from Shelter 3 to now? Um, how has it changed? Yeah. Mm. I think we've come back a little bit to our, our guitar riff roots. Um, I think we got, we, we got a little experimental on, uh, the stories we tell ourselves where we wanted to have a little less heavy guitar and more like single coil, um, I don't know how to describe it, but putting more emphasis on like distorted bass rather than heavy guitars. We kind of just want to do something different than all the other bands in our genre. But now we're kind of coming back to the heavier side of like what we like. So we're leaning into the guitar riffs and the heavy breakdowns and the bridges. Um, but I think that overall the, the evolution of our sound is, um, we're also getting the vocals on this album. We're really putting them on top of everything. You know, like the last album, Spirits, the album, the 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 vocals were cooked into the music a lot more. Almost like uh, Tool is a great example where the vocal is almost just like another instrument in the mix. It's not real in your face. It's it's kind of more subdued. Whereas this album, the vocals are much more in your face. You are happy about that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah yeah for selfish reasons yeah <laughs> I, I noticed I, face. I did a bit of research about you guys last night and and at the start of your career you guys sort of struggled a little bit and finding representation you've been independent for a hell of a long time did a lot of stuff yourself but now you've found your way to better noise music mate like it's, it's a pretty impressive growth like it's sort of is, is it is it easier in the respect these days now you've got that big representation or would it was it Better when you're just sort of in, in control of everything yourselves. Um, it's uh, I don't know. It it really is like a double edged sword. Yeah. A lot of times because there's moments when I think the label weighs in on stuff and brings a uh, certain wisdom to the table because they've gone through certain things with other bands. And they bring kind of a really methodical process to what we do in regards to how they want to roll out the album and how they want to do certain things. But then there's other times where it's really frustrating and difficult because they're so methodical and I would say maybe dogmatic about their process that we many times don't fit into that because every band's very different and every band's fan base is very different. So there's certain situations where we feel like we need to move faster or we need to pivot faster. But once the ship gets in motion with them, they just don't change course. And there's times when that's good. And there's times when that's bad uh, where we should have probably changed course sooner. Um, so I don't know, man, it's a, it's a mixed bag. I think that it's, it really is just like a, uh, I don't know. You almost, you know, we needed it when we were growing and like many bands do, it, it helped us grow. Um, but there's also, I don't know, it's a mixed bag, but I, you know, everyone at the label we, we love and we're very happy. They're, they're, they're fighting. I'll say this. We're in a much better place now with the label than we were like two years ago. We were at odds and now we're back aligned again. So that's really good. Yeah. Uh, you guys are uh, understandably doing a, a pretty big run of shows later on this year to close it out, but have you had many discussions to get into Australia yet? Like, is it going to happen next year, you reckon? Yeah, we're we're really trying to make it happen next year. Um, it's It really just comes down to the right timing and the right opportunity. Okay. Um, but I'm I'm feeling pretty optimistic that something will happen for 2025. Fantastic. All right, Johnny. Well, thanks very much for your time today, mate. Been a, I don't I don't like getting up early for anybody, but you've you've you made me smile. So thank you. It's been great. <laughs> well, I appreciate you uh not hitting snooze on the alarm clock there. <laughs>